We confess our faith in the Son, the Son who is the mediator of the covenant, who realized the covenant of grace by his death and reconciliation. He redeemed his people, legally made them to be the people of God, the covenant people of God. We confess our faith in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit who sent, was sent to incorporate us into the covenant life that we have with God and apply to us all the blessings of salvation. We believe in this. This is a confession of our faith, those articles of the Apostles' Creed. So the Catechism now says, what's the profit in believing all that? So you believe all that. What profit is it to you to believe that? And in a word, the profit is justification. Justification. That glorious truth of the Reformation <laughs> that was set forth so clearly by Martin Luther and John Calvin and the other reformers that freed the believers from the tyranny of Rome, from the tyranny of trying to work our own righteousness and become right with God, a weary and impossible task of trying to be right with God by our works. We are justified by faith without works. That's the essence of the Reformed faith and of the Gospel. But I said, this is a benefit of the covenant. That it is connected to the covenant is evident from the fact that, first of all, to be justified is really, it captures all the blessings that we have. If you are justified, you have everything, including the blessings of the covenant. In addition to that, righteousness is essential to the covenant life. We'll see this more this morning as we go on, that living with God is only possible for those who are righteous. It's the only way you can live with God. But most importantly, it's this. In the covenant, and only in the covenant, are you justified. Anyone outside the covenant of God is not justified, is not righteous with God. This is a benefit of the covenant, of the unconditional covenant. I make that explicit because there are many views of the covenant and almost all of them are a conditional view of the covenant. With a conditional view of the covenant, you understand, the ratification of the covenant is through your work. The covenant is something that God offers you. The covenant is something that God brings to you and now if you really want the blessings of the covenant, you have to do something. You have to believe. You have to work. And then you get the blessings of the covenant if you have done those things. The whole idea of a conditional, unconditional covenant is something that, as you well know, is inseparably tied to the Protestant Reformed churches not only in America, but here, but more in our history, which you may not be quite as aware of. Over 50 years ago, God graciously led the Protestant Reformed Church through a very, very difficult time. That led the, the Protestant Reformed Churches to see the importance of an unconditional covenant. I say God graciously led us through that. It didn't seem like grace. It was divisive. Over half the denomination left over the issue of whether the covenant is conditional or unconditional. Many ministers left. People lost friends. They lost family over the doctrinal division of whether the covenant is conditional or unconditional. It was grace for all that. Though it didn't seem like grace to those who went through it, it was bitter. 
But it was a grace because God made us to see the importance of the doctrine of an unconditional covenant. That we saw the by God's grace was Arminianism. A conditional covenant is something where God comes to every baptized child and offers salvation to that child. Promises salvation to every one of the children if only they will fulfill the condition of believing. That's Arminianism. It's also Roman Catholic. It's Roman Catholic because the Roman Catholic idea of the covenant such as they had is of the same nature that God wants to save and now it is up to the individual to believe. And if they believe and if they persevere in their works, then the covenant will be established with them and they will be saved. Today a controversy rages in Presbyterian and Reformed churches exactly over the matter of justification. Whether we are justified by faith alone or justified by faith and works. And the whole theology of this new movement within the Presbyterian and Reformed churches, it's all based squarely on a conditional covenant. A conditional covenant. Namely, that there is a covenant with every child, and that child must believe and persevere in his works. And that is part of his justification. When he finally stands before God, his final justification is on the basis of what Christ has done and what he has done. What that person has done, believing and obeying God. That's Roman Catholicism. The churches of the Reformed Persuasion and Presbyterian are going back to Roman Catholicism in their doctrine of justification. And that's why it's so important to see that it is only an unconditional covenant that will maintain the doctrine of the Lord's Day here about justification. An unconditional covenant is essential to that as this controversy is revealing. So let's consider this Lord's Day under the theme, justified by faith alone, a benefit of the unconditional covenant. Justified by faith alone, a benefit of the unconditional covenant. Three things we will notice, first of all, justified by the, the amazing truth, the amazing truth. Secondly, the solid basis is, of course, the cross of Christ. And finally, the covenant purpose. God justifying us by faith alone. The amazing truth is that you and I are righteous. Declared righteous. Righteous before God. Righteousness, as now we are considering it here, is a legal term. It is a legal term. It means to be right with the law. That is to say that the law does not condemn you. The law does not declare you a breaker of it. The law is the standard of what is right and what is wrong. The law righteousness then states that a person's status before the law is that he is right with it. If a person is guilty, if he has transgressed the law, he is not right with the law. He is a lawbreaker. He's guilty. But anyone who has not transgressed the law is found not guilty or righteous. In the whole matter of judgment, God is the judge here. He judges all men righteously. He's not a respecter of persons. It absolutely does not matter to him what clothes you are wearing or how much money you have or how smart you are or the family that you come from. When God judges, none of those things matter at all to him. 